So thank you everybody for your contributions. And um, now I think we can start this discussion. If there are any questions uh, or if there are any questions, we, we can read in the chat. Uh, so the discussion is open now. Well, I, I maybe just uh, open it up with um, with reflection on on how much there still has to be research. You know, like I I know that th these are very very specialized issues or very specialized materials, but uh, I guess we are really facing a huge um, huge amount of material which is uh, unresearched. But on the other hand, I'm also like asking myself like. Okay, so what is the what is the aim we are we are going forward? You know, because because yes, we can. It was difficult to communicate, and uh, and yes, many artists found very interesting, or theoreticians found very interesting ways how to how to do it. But what was the actually actual let's say input about this this uh, Exchange intellectual exchanges, you know, as I as I put it or said it in my in my in my uh, paper, like what could these four copies of of Razak Samizdat actually do? You know, of course they were circulating, but what was their what was their input? And uh, aren't we a little bit? Um, Let's say I maybe I am too, too pessimistic today. Like, aren't we exaggerating their their input actually? You know, by now studying it as precious archive archival material, which actually it, it is. But so so yeah, a little bit. I want a little bit poke at the discussion. <laughs> May I ask? Um... Pavlina, uh, I, I would, uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm really uh, going into like what you said, and um, I would be interested, uh, like to learn more what, uh, what was um, the, the communication network, I mean, the international one uh, of uh, Petr Rezek, if, whether there is uh, some correspondence uh, to uh, to research, like, did he have any uh, direct uh, um, personal um, correspondence abroad, like with whom he was in regular touch, like in the end of 70s, early 80s, or like he, he worked with uh, printed material or like the, the sources that were published in the US or in Western Europe? Like uh, I would be interested, like to learn about like this communication, whether there was some kind of like communication network around him, like uh, like one could say about Iji Valoch or, or or Milan Knižák earlier in the late sixties. Well, uh, I'm not sure. I I didn't manage to talk to Petra Razet. Uh, about it recently and uh, and I was you know trying to ask these questions uh, especially who was recommending uh, the the artists and and who was uh, you know I only know that some as I mentioned that some of the texts were translated by Karel Miller and uh, he was definitely connected with uh, you know that the Czech art progressive circles like Jiří Chalup, Jiří Chalupecký, Jiří Valoch. He was obviously very closely connected with Milan Knižák because he published actually five notebooks on Milan Knižák. So it's obvious they, you know, Knižák saw it as a certain channel through which he could publish his, his material, his texts, his manifestos, his travelogue written in, in, in 60s. But I actually, to my knowledge, I don't think Rezek had international connections in those days. I think he was very much connected with the local progressive art scene, but maybe I'm wrong, you know, like I, I really don't know. Um, uh, it is a little bit difficult to, to communicate with Petr Rezek. And, uh, 
So I don't know. My, I, my, my feeling is that he was just very well connected and very much interested in like, he was very close. Like I, I remember uh, Petr Štambal, Jan Mačov was telling me that he was just coming every day and stop at their work, you know, like, so they were really seeing each other every day drink, drink the, the, you know, like their jobs and, and, uh, and they would like meet up for coffee and talk, talk things. And Razek, it, I think brought very, like many very interesting ideas because he was psychologist, he was uh, like philosopher, really interested in phenomenology. They were also very much interested in Zen Buddhism and, and things like that. So, so I think he really broadened their, their you know, their ideas and, uh, and the way he was uh, interpreting um, uh progressive works by these artists which is in his in the essays published already in the samizdat and later in his book it's very i mean i'm sure you you know the book it's it's a very very different perspective of of contemporary art and and i think in a way uh because it was one of the few sources those days it was immensely influential you know Thank you. Uh, I would have another question, but uh, I do not want to <laughs> cover everything. So I, I leave it for, for uh, other questions. And uh, maybe in the, in late, uh, uh, later I, I ask uh, the second question, uh, if I may. OK. Um, I could see Carolina's hand up, but I just I just wanted to reflect on uh, Pavlina's question that what what consequence <laughs> all these exchanges had, which is I think a very important one. But uh, what 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 was interesting in in this case that is that uh, these were kind of outside interests that made interesting kind of disciplinary transfers and. I think this is always uh, a consequence when like someone from outside like fine arts and also like in the case of Agrilia, I think it, it, it was again uh, a kind of uh, uh, transfer from like various disciplines. Uh, uh, um, and, and I think that that's something that, that was really kind of, uh, uh, characteristic for for this time that uh, interesting things were realized through like kind of hybrid collaborations between people from different disciplines and and I think this was a very important uh, factor in growing the networks when like people from different disciplines the localities were connected and somehow tried to to um, join in uh, or, or connect their, their own fields. And I, I'm just wondering if it was a kind of um, strategy or a maneuver of, of this kind of escapism to, to transfer fine art from its institutions, which were controlled by the state into other realms, into fiction, into like fantasy or into publications or science or scientific discourse and uh, like, in my case, I don't know if, if I could make it clear, but it was also a struggle like how how to go beyond the Marxist terminology describing is European art uh, that was used a lot by by Grow and like East European artists kind of more jokingly try to reflect on and what I didn't have time was uh, to for was uh, uh, the uh, Polish queer quick uh, duos uh, exchange with Bro that in 77 ended up again with the same problem. What's the context of, of this uh, uh, whole practice uh, that was grow so much uh, kind of uh, uh, prop propagating? Uh, how is it, is it uh, re uh, really an alternative to, to Western commercial? Uh, uh, art, uh, or, or does it uh, have its own kind of vocabularies? So um, I just wanted to say that maybe consequences or effects are, are a bit abstract, but I think uh, th these were very important uh, exchanges in, in this sense. And uh, just, <laughs> I have some very specific questions. Uh, uh, one to, to um, Andrea, 
uh, that uh, were there any connection between uh, Linarchik and uh, uh, Robert Filiu and uh, uh, George Beck, who, who had some similar project in the 60s, like in Sadilla, um, if, if there's any connection. And, and one more is, is that um, uh, in the correspondence between Klaus Groh and Milinacic, I could only read Milinacic's letters, and he was also critical of Aktuala Kunst in Osteuropa, but it, I couldn't find out what was his criticism, if you know anything about it, because I think it's really interesting how, how um, he, his activities were kind of turning away from like the political reality or maybe not so much, but still uh, this kind of fictional uh, to, to, to think about art in a imagined, uh, as an imagined uh, uh, realm um, is, is still a question for me if it's escapism or criticism or what was the real angle <laughs> of, of this. Uh, thank you, Zsuzsa. Uh... These are uh, very good questions. Uh, I will start with the second question. Uh, is it for this case or case <clears throat> uh, I, I have talked in my presentation about this uh, aspect and about this uh, other where, like Argelia was also ex audio local, it was called Adelware, and uh, recently also defined this Adelware. Uh, which is also the name of the monography of uh, Alex Minashi, he wrote uh, in the beginning, at the beginning of the 1990s. And uh, when I talk to Minashi, I can maybe uh, transmit the information that, uh, that came uh, from you first. Um, he told me his other was in the 1960s or in the second half of the 1960s, uh, Paris, because uh, he stayed there for longer time also and the activities there and he had contact with this um, French art scene and of course with the electronic. And in the 1970s this other uh, was uh, in Argelia and uh, this wooden cottage actually where he spent a lot of time um, in the nature. And I think um, uh, what he also expresses um, very often is uh, actually, for, for him, creation out of there. So uh, I asked him uh, a longer time ago um, in an interview um, if he felt uh, somehow really limited uh, and uh, somehow um, if there was impact uh, that was very, very, uh, very expensive. Uh, because of uh, normalization period in 1970s. And uh, he told me, uh, of course, he was excluded from um, the Association of Art History uh, of uh, Artists uh, in Slovakia and so on. So he could not exhibit that officially, but he has found a way uh, to, to work still. And he told me actually uh, who wanted to work uh, that uh, people could work. Uh, the only difference is that they could not exhibit. So uh, his opinion is uh, he always uh, felt free enough in regardless of any, any uh, regime or political situation to create. So he tried to keep uh, his way as well in the 60s, as well in the 70s, as well in the 80s, as well in the 90s. And actually, his work is very continuously developing uh, the same ideas of the 60s further on and further on. Uh, now, uh, he has a series Exodus, uh, which is actually based on his photo collages uh, uh, I have uh, shown in my presentation. So, uh, I think he would not uh, see it so tiny that he had to uh, escape uh, somewhere in this sense of. Uh, total necessity to escape of uh, some reality he lived in. I would not consider it like this uh, uh, after I, I talked to him many times about this topic. Uh, of course, if you see it from the perspective of art historians, uh, 
we are philosophy as a uh, normalization or these restrictions and uh, limits. Uh, we can uh, make this interpretation, it was a kind of case, uh, but uh, regarding this old view on this, uh, on this subject, uh, I would be a little bit, um, yeah, how can I say, it? Uh, not so strong in formulating it as 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 a so uh, this is one aspect. And your second question was if he met uh, Robert Hillier uh, and who? I didn't understand. George Brecht. Ah, George Brecht. Um, I'm not sure if he met him, but uh, as he arrived to Paris in 1964, it was already, uh, nouveau realism was already over. So uh, it was a kind of second wave of nouveau realism. Uh, which uh, was connected also to uh, another group of artists. Uh, not uh, the first group of uh, nouveau realism with Klein and Cezanne, Niki de Santal, Jean Tangeli, uh, but uh, to the second uh, group, and he actually had contact uh, more with the second group. But Kaleri, Laya, Gansi, uh, they cooperate uh, till today uh, with uh, Ben Bautier, for example. So I can imagine he met also these artists in connection. Uh, to this gallery. It's a small gallery in Cartier Latin in the center of Paris, a uh, very uh, famous one, small but famous, uh, traditional, long tradition. So I can uh, imagine he met uh, this artist, but if he explicitly met uh, Robert Hillier or, or George Brett, I'm not sure. I don't know. Just they, they had a similar project in the 60s, like an uh, imaginary institution with like um, all kind of fictional positions. But I think it was also like everywhere in, in this, this time. Uh, so there are many similar examples. And of course, they, they, they all have like a formal similarity, but very different meanings and significance. I was just and interested I think because the of the in 1960s was very good. Uh, there were situations mm -hmm. of catalogs and of uh, people talk together about this project. So I think his knowledge about uh, their projects of Hilly and Drake uh, was there definitely. Uh, and uh, Carolina also has her hand up. I barely remember what I wanted to ask, but uh, I just, uh, I was very stimulated by um, what Pavlina asked about the input and um, in combination with this, uh, with this um, situation of marginalization of the artist that she was talking about. So we have this several waves of the marginalizing artist. Now we are living through the wave of searching for networks and finding, finding the meaning when the practice was well networked and connected, right? And uh, I think this was also the, the Daniel question after that, how, how the um, artist was uh, connected within the, this transnational field. But maybe we should talk about this kind of circulation and network separately. I, I, I don't know yet. Um, exactly what I mean by that. But I think uh, if you're asking about the input, if you're asking about this, uh, what was the meaning of this um, for uh, some is that copies? Um, yes, so we have we have these two levels of the local circulation and um, maybe they weren't um, within, the, within this uh, transnational uh, space present but maybe they, they were circulated in a sense that they cause another waves, let's say. So I think maybe this is the, this is the way how to approach the art, artist who didn't put any um, effort into being networked, right? Or that their production was the, the, the design for the very local friendly um, audience of seven uh, fellow um, colleagues. Yeah, yeah, it's, I think a lot of art is also, uh, especially in 1970s in Czechoslovakia, they just really uh, took refuge in their 
private space, you know, and uh, some of them created their best works, you know, like I can think of like Karel Mali, who, who just like worked in his studio and, and made an amazing art during that time when he wasn't disturbed by any exhibitions, any <laughs> buyers, any communication, you know, so yeah, so yeah, it's also another another uh, thing. But another thing uh, which which really provokes my mind uh, is um, is the way of language. You know, the the of course we use the language for communication, and and part of these samizdats uh, or the correspondence, it's always the the language. And you know, it really fascinates me how bad level of English there was actually in Czechoslovakia in, in those days. And uh, uh, most most of the sources were coming from the Anglophone world. And, and you know, like some of the texts uh, translated for uh, both of the, uh, you know, like Karel Thrip uh, anthology and also for the, for the Samizdats of Petr Rezek, uh, were taken from English and they were translated by Karel Miller or Yiri Kovanda. And uh, it is obvious that, you know, their, their level of English was kind of mediocre in, in those days. So, so we really, another question is like how much there is lost in translation, you know, and, and, to, and, and mis misleading information, you know, because we, we know how, uh, even in the best translations, there is always something lost, you know. And 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 if you if you look at, for example, the correspondence of fluxes, which is very interesting, one of the issues of the Samizdas, and it's the correspondence of Knijak with uh, with Fluxus artists, especially connected with the preparation of Fluxus Festival in Prague in 1966. And I actually happened to study this correspondence on the other end in the MoMA Museum in the Silverman collection. And the the letters from Knijak are so funny, you know, like that the, the level of English is just so bad, you know, it's just, it, it's just, but there is so much will to communicate and they're in the end, they manage to communicate, but it's really, so yeah, so that's another issue, you know, and, and I also wonder like, of course, like how were Czech artists communicating with the others within the block? It's obvious with Slovaks, Polish, we could really talk no problem or correspond, but how it was with the Hungarian artists, you know, like what was their lingua franca? Was it English or was it German? Was it French? I guess it was like case to case, you know, and also these different levels of, of knowledge and yeah. Let me, let me add quickly that it's really interesting as I was reading through the correspondence between Gro and many East European artists that like in 1970s, Stambera was kind of apologizing for his bad German, but later on he, he sent Gro very, very eloquent descriptions of his artistic development. And I'm, I'm not sure, but I can imagine that throughout this correspondence and through creating work based on language, they kind of develop their skills. Definitely, definitely. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's that progress is obvious. Like, uh, yeah, like when you read the first letters to um, Machunas or Friedman from, from mm -hmm. Knijak, it's like, yeah, it's like how we corresponded during yeah. our primary school days, <laughs> you know, like, so that's level, but then it gets better. But I, I also think in many cases, they mm -hmm. found somebody in their circles who, uh, I think Stembera told me that he had some lady who was like mm -hmm. translating for him. And even Knijak, I think they later had somebody who was helping mm -hmm. them with the, with the English, you know, because it was just, mm -hmm. yeah. So you just found somebody who, who was like, yeah, yeah. Help, helped you, you know. I just wanted to add that it's very interesting that in the 80s, Stambera switched to English. But I think I could see that I, I, I don't really speak German well, but I can see the, like, the level of complexity that is growing in, in his letters. And then uh, there's a gap and, and he switched to English in his correspondence. And it's really interesting, like Gabor Atalai, who was so successful in this international context, he is using very, very bad English, but it, it didn't stop him. Whereas 
a lot of artists were stopped by this and in other correspondence they complain a lot about difficulties in in uh, communication and that's why i i i have this uh, uh kind of um, uh, assumption that some works some artworks are also reflecting on on this situation and uh, i i try to show show some of, of these examples and i think it also had a kind of conceptual as Bro also mentioned sometimes it had a conceptual significance if they use german french or english or i don't know i've, I've never seen cases when they would have uh, used russian uh, but it yeah. could have been um, an evident choice, but they did, did not. Yeah, yeah. I was like wondering if uh, sometimes like uh, between Czechoslovak artists and Hungarian, they were using Russian in communication. Like Never. when there was the meeting in Balato Boglar, what was there like how they were talking? Uh, it's very interesting because uh, Peter Bartos, as far as I know, he doesn't speak foreign languages, but uh uh he uh told me through like uh, mira Herb, i think or, or it was petra Fryantova, that he had a discussion with indra back on the buck on the train but uh, no no one remembers in what language so i think it was some kind of magic and on the photos you can see how oh, they're using their hands and <laughs> kind of trying to communicate and th this is why lasso back has a project with the with the words, the dictionary is also very much into this question mm -hmm. that he already reflected on this problem, what language we can use for communication. And these words were those which are similar in, in all the three languages like Slovak, Czech and Hungarian. So I think like that, that bad German and English maybe work because there's a, a common kind of or similar mm -hmm. vocabulary but a similar distance between <laughs> their own language and, and, uh, and the, their second language. Someone wanted to ask or comment? I'm sorry, I, I cannot find the rise hand icon here. <laughs> so I, I speak directly. Uh, uh, I would have maybe, um, uh, I was thinking like uh, to, to ask more like a methodological question, like based on the discussion we have. And uh, first uh, question is for using the term non-conformist art, which is um, generally known for Soviet, uh, Soviet uh, <clears throat> unofficial art of the 80s and was, uh, was labeled as such. And whether this, this notion works for actually, whether this wor word or this, this, uh, this uh, um, notion works for uh, Eastern Central East Europe. This would be the first question. And the second question, the notion of mapping, like which was uh, brought by Piot Piotrowski and um, <clears throat> like uh, uh, to, to what uh, extent or, or, or how, how much we could, we could rely, rely on this horizontal uh, approach uh here in uh, like mapping the or mapping yeah in in this word uh using this this notion of mapping and um uh be, because yes uh, now now uh, you raised uh, a very important question of language and um i think it's uh, it's a crucial uh, uh, uh it's a crucial question and um like what we could uh, how we could approach this this topic of uh, uh, artistic communication or artistic networking, like uh, in uh, uh, what uh, what would be uh, art historical approach? Um, because uh, there are, I, I also think that there are, as uh, as um, uh, also Zuzia told that there were various uh, circles, various circuits, and uh, various. Uh, uh, ways of like um, mm, distributing uh, the uh, the artistic uh, uh, projects or or uh, or also um, there was this uh, we could speak also about uh, these creative misunderstandings uh, and uh, these channels of uh, of uh, appropriation uh, and um, and participation. 
So I'm, this is like a very, uh, very open question, like whether you have any, this is, this is maybe question for Andrea, but also for, uh, for uh, Pavlina and Juja, like uh, whether you have any idea, like how uh, we could, uh, we could approach maybe more like this inter, this, I mean, from international perspective, like once we are meeting here uh, and trying to find the, uh, um, what we, what we could, where we could uh, uh, start discussing like this more uh, local histories, or uh, to 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 how how we could merge merge uh, uh, our uh, um, capacities. So this is this is really a, <laughs> I'm sorry uh, for my uh, not well articulated, but I uh, I hope that you you understand what I mean. Uh, maybe I just uh, start uh, because of the title of the conference, because uh, uh, and then uh, I will uh, give the word uh, to my colleagues. Uh, uh, but uh, this was with Zuzha, I remember the day. <laughs> what will be the right, uh, what will be, be the right uh, terminology? Because uh, before it was not non-official uh, in the title. And then, uh, uh, we discussed it uh, that actually is official, unofficial. Uh, it's not really working for everything. Uh, so we uh, try to to leave this terminology, which is maybe also a little bit black and white perspective, uh, because there are projects also which are not only official or only unofficial. So um, uh, we talk then about it non-conforming. Uh, which has nothing to do with uh, non conformist act in the uh, Soviet Union. It was no connotation to this uh, terminology. But you are right, actually, uh, now I realize it also. <laughs> if you talk about non conformist you talk about uh, this, uh, this uh, area. Uh, no, uh, the basic was uh, it is out of norm, uh, just to put it very simply. It's not really in this uh, kind of, uh, it's a like uh, island of uh, positive deviation or uh, to call it uh, with this terminology, it's, it is something which does not fit in this, uh, in this usual and mainstream, uh, and mainstream norms. And it looks for us as a good uh, term, terminology, but um, this notion, we can discuss it, and it was also, I think, uh, the idea that maybe within these three years, we will find uh, also a better terminology for, for all these uh, projects and for all these uh, artistic strategies. Uh, because uh, I have talked in my introduction about this uh, revision. Uh, for me personally, I see it really a kind of re revision also of myself. Uh, a possibility, opportunity to find better words and better language if we want to uh, to name also this, uh, this, uh, this, all these uh, things. And um, if we will find, uh, please feel free, if we will find a better, better name for it, then um, we can call it also with another name. I'm, I'm free with my ideas for, for that. And I open uh, also the discussion for this. Uh, maybe we can't solve it today, but uh, within our project, we can continue uh, discussing about uh, this term and uh, discovering new terms possibly. Maybe can I <clears throat> can I just react to this? Uh, it's a very interesting question on on that nonconformist uh, term, you know. And and now when I'm thinking about it. First, my first reaction was like, yeah, it's a good term because it, it helped us to get out of this clinch of uh, non-official, semi-official, uh, official, you know, which we all know it doesn't work because it, it's it's fluid and a lot of activities were sort of partly official and then they were criminalized and, you know, so it's, but on the other hand, it also doesn't work because Conformist 
nonconformist means like uh, going beyond the, the the widely accepted practice, you know. And uh, so, yeah, we imagine somebody who is like, let's say, conceptualist or really progressive artist. But um, we also have, especially in Czechoslovakia, due to the normalization switch, a lot of artists who were totally mainstream, let's say, in 1960s, but they were sort of pushed away from that mainstream by the political changes, and they suddenly became like these nonconformist artists, but uh, their artistic project production was actually very, you know, typical, let's say, or or just, you know, like rooted in, in that, uh, in that uh, traditional, let's say, modernism to, to be concrete, you know? So I think that the term really is complicated is complicated for us to to use and i really didn't you know i tried to think of like progressive artists that that's also that doesn't work you know and uh, yeah so there's always problem with the with the with the terminology like that but i personally don't think that the nonconformist would work for for let's say czechoslovak situation we, we were also discussing the possibility of using parallel, uh, which is tricky. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, just very briefly, I think, yeah, this is again a, a, a question of terminology that, that um, uh, as Daniel talked about, like uh, Piotr Trotrovsky's approach to, to the art history of this region, that with this whole project, I think our mission is to find not only like points of comparison, because I think this why, why we maybe prefer, like I prefer parallel, <laughs> like maybe for Andra it's important for non, to, to use non-conform, is, is, it, is it exactly because uh, this is really not yet researched how these things relate to each other in, in like cross-border exchanges, because if we look at the whole scene or the whole region from outside, it, it's much different. But when we contrast like what official meant like in Hungary or in Czechoslovakia or in, in Poland or in Romania or in Yugoslavia, then there are huge differences. And I think, uh, I, or it is my vision that the best way to, to, to sort out this is uh, contradictions is, is to look at and research actual exchanges and transfers between participants when they discuss this or when there was a correspondence and or when they misunderstood each other. And not just to, from an outside perspective, like as an archeologist, but yeah. it's a bit utopian. <laughs> I just add something. Thank you for, for this discussion. I think it's very fruitful, but not at the moment, but could be. And I think the next step may, maybe would be to like think about the whole period, the, about the period as a whole, not in those differences between conformist and non-conformist and official and non-official, but like to look at it uh, together, which uh, we haven't done yet, but I think it, it would be the next step. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you, Hannah. And uh, uh, I was also thinking like about this reductivism of Piotr Piotrovsky that he actually constructed uh, the, um, the notion of uh, centralist Europe and uh, excluded Soviet Union uh, by purpose, of course, because uh, uh, he, 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 it was his, his, his turn and uh, he, he, uh, he had reasons for that, for doing that. But uh, in fact, if we are researching artistic communication, like at least uh, uh, Inji Chalupetsky, um, Alex Minarchik, they had very intense um, uh, uh, relations, uh, correspondence, and even like friendships in Soviet Union, like uh, you call just few, uh, Ivan Chuikov, uh, Ilya Kabakov, uh, Kabakov visited Minarchik. Uh, Minarchik visited Kabakov in, 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 in uh, 70s in Moscow. Uh, the same with Tomasz Strauss. Uh, um, there were many friendships that are not yet researched. So like coming back to this notion of nonconformist, um, I think it was labeled already in the 80s, like in Western 
uh, artistic system. Uh, in the 80s, you could find already this term using in uh, 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 magazines like Flash Art uh, uh, or, and others. Uh, um, like uh, I, I, for me, this this term is problematic also. But uh, 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 talking about uh, communication networks, like definitely, the Soviet Union should be should be uh, uh, considered uh, here, and uh, the same with official art. I think, like uh, I, 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 I totally agree. This would be more complex research, and we would have to search uh, or, or uh, at least like propose ways how to how to like go uh, 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 transverse transversally through these uh, 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 lawyers and levels of, of artistic system or system of art and non-art official and unofficial we could we should go transversally of course i agree but how to do that how how uh uh how to uh, uh i think that uh, it would be very interesting but uh, the the question is yeah the 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 approach how we can do it thank you if i may I think we are all doing it, <laughs> and uh, I think um, that, uh, I, for instance, I felt interpelled by this uh, parallel and um, non-conformist to the extent that I, I had to start my presentation from 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 disagreeing because I felt so interpelled by this term. But at the same time, I started thinking again, like rethinking the, the the communication through these terms right and obviously poland my case study it's a different case than uh, so socialist czechoslovakia uh, but also i wanted to say that what i see as a one of um, possibilities to explore this how can we it's certain archaeology of of language that were used by artists at the time that I search in the fragments of the discourses, the, the, the way how they were speaking about self-instituting. And uh, I think it is, uh, obviously we are projecting, we are projecting our uh, current situation. But for instance, even the notion of precarity, which is so overused when we talk about self-instituting right now, we talk about contemporary artists self-instituting in terms of self-exploitation, precarious situation, and so on. Whereas this uh, look at the, at, the, at the 70s, let's say, this notion of precarity, so that everything goes with the favor, basically. This is the origin of the word. Uh, it's, it's, we are also not um, maybe um, um, not perceiving the situation in the terms. Before we had these paradigms, totalitarian state and weak resistance, and now we are totally fascinated by interconnections and we slowly forget about precarious and fragile situation of this artist let's say so i i uh, i i think that one of the ways would be as you said for sure not to um, fetishize the notion of central eastern europe proposed by uh, petrovsky it was his research area doesn't have to be our research area and uh, secondly to maybe check the discourse also, not only the art, but the words that were in, in, in a circulation at the time. 